warm welcome to you all over the world, the viewers of Channel I. We have got a very special guest with us uh, in this show today. He is Dr. Mong Zani. Dr. Mong Zani is a specialist and expert on genocide. As you know that uh, over the last three months, we have received more than 700,000 Burmese Rohingya Muslims from our neighboring Myanmar or Burma we call. So we're going to talk about uh, the very uh, humanitarian issue of Rohingya Muslims and the related matters with Dr. Mong Zani. Warm welcome to this show today. Thank you and happy to be here. Thank you very much. You have been working uh, for these uh, issues and related matters of genocide all over the world nowadays. You have been a scholar on this matter. So from August 25th this year till date, we have received more than uh, 700,000 Rohingya Muslims and other uh, ethnic groups uh, from Myanmar. Very shortly, please tell us about the state of this uh, problem and the uh, crisis. In a word, it is a genocide. Mm -hmm. However defined it, whether genocide is defined sociologically very broadly mm -hmm. or very narrowly as articulated by the um, Genocide Convention of 1948. Either way, you know, whether you are a strict um, legalist or a sociologist who would define genocide broadly, this is a classic example of a genocide that we are seeing in the 21st century. Yeah. And I, I'm here not simply as a specialist or expert. I'm here as a Buddhist. Mm -hmm. I'm here as a Burmese. Mm -hmm. Because this is, you know, the persecution of Rohingya Muslims mm -hmm. is, is a complete and total opposite of what a Burmese or a Buddhist person is supposed to do to another human being. So, so I'm here as essentially as a Burmese Buddhist who says to my own You're country, a Burman. I am Burman, I am Buddhist, yeah. and I came from an extended military family, yeah. and I have like, you know, uh, relatives who have served in the various armed uh, forces branches right. since its inception uh, over two generations, three generations. And so I'm here to protest what my own country is doing to the most vulnerable uh, and, and a small population of Rohingya. Actually, how many hundred thousands of Rohingya people you call Rohingya in Burma uh, till date or nowadays? Well, less than, um, you know, a, a one million. Mm -hmm. You know, according to the Burmese uh, official statistics, mm -hmm. uh, five years ago, mm -hmm. there were estimated 1.33 million Rohingyas. Yeah. You know, that's from the official uh, Burmese officials, uh, mm -hmm. such as ex-immigration uh, minister and Brigadier General uh, Kenyi. Mm -hmm. Today, we have roughly 600,000 Burmese uh, Rohingyas left in the country. There are more Rohingyas mm -hmm. outside the country than inside. Even in Bangladesh uh, alone, you know, there are estimated one million. Yeah, from and 1998 and this time, we have got more than a million uh, Rohingya Muslim people coming from uh, Myanmar or B Burma, whatever you call. So your, your family is uh, associated with both the groups which are related to the power or involved in power, like the Aung San Suu Kyi's uh, close associate is one of your uncles I have uh, gone through over this history and the bio of yours. And you also supported and worked with uh, Aung San Suu Kyi what makes you just come other side of the matter to come here and speak in favor of the humanity, humanitarian ground? Well, I have supported Aung San Suu Kyi mm -hmm. for 15 years, from right. 1988, 89, since she emerged as a political figure right. uh, in Burma out of the um, student uprisings in 1988. I've also worked with the uh, top uh, military leaders <coughs> when I, you know, decided that the West was, you know, uh, talking the talk of uh, support for democracy and not really walking the walk. 
-hmm. And so I have supported both the military leadership and Aung San Suu Kyi in both cases in good faith because I'm only an ordinary citizen. I wanted to see my country peaceful and prosperous. And, and the reason I decided that I want to support neither Aung San Suu Kyi nor the military is because both groups have crossed the line, the red line. For me, the red line is that uh, is the genocide. We cannot. Why, why Burmese army or the Myanmar army started this uh, war against uh, Muslim uh, Rohingyas in Man Myanmar or Burma uh, about uh, five, six decades from now? Well, when General Nguyen, the late General Nguyen, took over the, um, the country or government, from the democratically elected uh, Prime Minister Unu in 1962. Mm -hmm. Nguyen shifted the, the policy of multiculturalism, tolerance, mm -hmm. w uh, by which you know, <clears throat> the Burmese of different ethnic and faith backgrounds were um, cherished and allowed to serve in organs of the state mm -hmm. to uh, you know, isolationist, you know, anti-Muslim, mm -hmm. Uh, xenophobic national policies. So the Burmese army had adopted anti-Muslim national policies mm -hmm. since 1960s. Yeah, I, I want to know why army took this stand against the Muslims. Well, because they, um, because of the racism yeah, against the Muslims. If the local common Burmese or Myanmar people are not in favor of that uh, anti-racism. Why and how army could deploy to the society that uh, anti-racism uh, policy? Well, in 1988, we had this like, nationwide, uh, nationwide uprisings targeting what we consider the common enemy of the people, which is the military, one party military rule, mm. Christians, Buddhists, uh, you know, Muslims, you know, different classes, people from all walks of lives, came together uh, to oppose the military. Yeah? This was in 1988. And so after 1988, um, <clears throat> the military needed, um, b b essentially, mm -hmm. needed a scapegoat so that the society could be fractured, society could be divided into different camps that were at loggerheads with each other. And so this, out of this uh, strategic need mm -hmm. to keep people divided, this is a, a divide and rule situation in the I country. I understand. In, yeah. in, in the early 50s, uh, I believe that the Mr. Emir Rashid and Aung San Suu Kyi's father, General Aung San, then he was a student leader, of course. They were, the, Rashid was the uh, Rangoon University Student Union President. That's correct. And later on, Aung San, uh, General Aung San, uh, Aung San was there as That's the right. president as well. And they led the nation to the independence or kind of create, creation of Myanmar, Burma, those right. days. How come a group, an ethnic group, which is deeply involved in creating a country can be victim of this kind of heinous atrocities and genocide. You see, you can, you can tell us something about that. Well, I mean, there are two issues here. You know, Aung San was already assassinated at the time of independence, mm -hmm. and M.A. Rashid was his, um, you know, a, a fellow activist against the British colonial rule. Right. This is like, you know, a, a Muslim Burmese a, a student activist and Burmese Buddhist Marxist student leader working together as brothers right. against the oppression. Right. And Aung San was survived by Rashid, who mm. escaped the assassination. And, and Rashid stayed on as a part of a very prominent cabinet uh, member mm -hmm. in the Prime Minister Unud's cabinet in the 1950s. Right. And um, there are two issues. One is the, um, the general... Islamophobia, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, that has taken roots mm -hmm. since colonial time in Burma as a result of like a competition over, you know, resources and employment, uh, and also like uh, the different cultural systems. So, so the pe people uh, 
the, the Buddhist approach um, cultural differences with apprehension. Yeah? So there are two elements. Uh, one is economic dimension of racism, and the other one is the fear of the unknown other. By the, uh, you know, and, and that's one type of uh, issue that we are dealing with, because we have 17 different types of Muslim communities in Burma, mm -hmm. based on different ethnicity, uh, geographic locations, and migratory histories. Mm -hmm. And Rohingyas are the only one yeah, that has a concentrated geographic location, which they can call legitimately mm -hmm. their homeland. Yeah? And so, so the Burmese army have begun targeting That Rohingyas. was Arakan, you mean, right? Arakan, North yeah. Arakan. Yeah, yeah. That they, uh, we call it Rakhine. Rakhine. So, so like names are like, you know, the bicultural, bi, uh, bi, bilingual names. Arakan was an independent kingdom. Kingdom. Uh, until 1784. Century. 1784. 84. That means and 18th century. 18th century. Right. And uh, we, the Burmese, yes. from the uh, dry zone of Burma, uh -huh. um, you know, essentially colonized the independent kingdom of Arakan, uh -huh. where Buddhists and uh, Muslims and other uh, faith communities served in the sing a single Buddhist kingdom. And that itself um, that came under various. But that is against the. That is against the. Uh, main structure of the Burmese nation, Myanmar nation, because Myanmar is a country like the America itself, because it's, there is no, nobody called uh, original or real or uh, ethnic uh, Burmese. Everybody is a migrant uh, over there, immigrant over there. That's correct. That's correct. Because, um, you know, the, the, the Burmese are considered uh -huh. um, the, the migrants from southern China. Yeah. Starting in the 8th eight, century. And from elsewhere of, the, oh, yeah, of yeah. this region. Oh, definitely. There, there is a lot of like, uh, you know, this, the identity formation, as, if you will, yes. of the Buddhist um, is still evolving. The, many of us are mixed. You know, I am Burmese and born from Lower Burma, mm -hmm. and also I also have. Um, you um, born in Mandalay. I was born in Mandalay. Yeah. Uh, that's the cultural heart of the country. Right. I also have mm -hmm. Manipuran blood, mm -hmm. and so you will not find "quote unquote" pure Burmese. Mm -hmm. You know, like Burmese, as you said, mm -hmm. it, it's like American. So mm -hmm. all, you know, like we all sort of melted into Coming a from multi-background. Uh, right. Rohingya is the same thing. Same thing, yes. Yeah, Arakan is, I mean, if you go to Arakan or Rakhine, mm -hmm. you will find a lot of uh, inter interracial mingling. Yeah. Now of course, the, problem the is languages are there. The multiple languages are yeah. being said and yeah. uttered in there, yeah. like the Bangla, Urdu, That's right. Hindi, and even Portuguese. Yeah. So how the army took Muslims group to go for cleansing. Well, it, the, uh, the army did that, still doing it, yeah. um, in two different ways. Mm. Um, for the Muslims who are not Rohingyas, mm -hmm. who are scattered across the country, yes. they passed what they call national race and faith protection laws. Yeah? And, and uh, because they, they believe, uh, and they also brainwashed the Burmese public against the original vision of the father of the nation, Aung San, mm -hmm. who say everyone who was born in the country, irrespective of race or faith, is Burmese and native. Everyone who wants to work for the betterment of the everyone right. is Burmese. Doesn't matter how you look, what your skin is dark or light or in between. And so against this, you know, multiculturalist, secularist vision of uh, the late General Aung San, mm -hmm. The army that he founded has moved the society along the lines of what I would say a, a, a fascist vision where identity is defined on the basis of a single faith and a blood-based notion of racial purity. That is exactly what Hitler said in his book, Mein Kampf. Mm -hmm. we, can, we don't have identities. No one has identities, uh, you know, that is based on pure blood. No one is pure blood. I mm -hmm. mean, Bengalis are not pure blood, you know, mm -hmm. and I am not, uh, the English are not. If you go back far enough. It's all about immigration and migrating people all over the world. That, that, that's right. But that, that one of the major problems is right. that the Burmese generals yeah. believe in this fascist conception of pure-blooded Burmese 
and uh, for them to be Burmese is to be Buddhist. Mm -hmm. so, so anyone who is not, not Buddhist, a Buddhist has been cleansed from the um, uh, the from their forces. homeland, from exactly. their from their everything. From the, we will not see a single Muslim army or air force officer above the rank of captain in Burma today. F the, in the arm, armed forces, that was headed at the time of independence by a Quran Christian and other Christians and Muslim in high ranking positions, and and by the same token, Aung San Suu Kyi herself despite her 25 plus years living in England, despite her being an Oxford uh, graduate, she also cleansed her party, yeah, ruling National League for Democracy, of all Muslims. By single-mindedly, she blocked any proposals by her deputies to field Muslim candidates on the basis of their leadership capacity. She said, no, 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 I would not have any Muslim candidate. So in the history Sad. of Burma, we have two major institutions that are most powerful, yeah, morally, intellectually, politically, uh, the armed forces and Aung San Suu Kyi-led National League for Democracy Party. Both are Muslim free. So from 1948, where multiculturalism and secular humanism was the guiding principle of Burma to today we have a purist fascist vision that is being pursued by both armed forces the military and leadership and Aung San Suu Kyi. So the atrocities and the genocide is being carried out against the ethnic Muslim Rohingya people in Myanmar, Burma and so they are fleeing from there to Bangladesh in a huge number so far, so good. Yeah. We have got more than a million. Yeah. Can I can I interject uh, one Just thing here? Just very quickly. Yeah. Um, the, the Rohingyas are seen by the military leadership mm -hmm. since the early 1960s as a, th a threat to Burmese national security because they have bicultural ties with Chittagong, mm -hmm. and uh, they are seen as uh, potential proxies by the, or for the Bangladeshi state that in their eyes is attempting to wage it's all of their the visualization war. Exactly. it's not real false uh, perception of threat false, so, so false that, that is why perception. Rohingyas are targeted specifically uh, for, for this genocidal uh, the project or or Ajani so how how to address this issue how we can send them back to their homeland, to their motherland, to their country of origin. This uh, over a million Rohingya people we have got, this is a big, big pressure on our economy and on our social uh, things. Well, I mean, like this, this is something that has been unfolding. That's mm -hmm. why, I, you know, I call this uh, the slow burning genocide mm -hmm. that uh, began in 1978 with uh, what uh, many of you know as King Dragon Operation, mm -hmm. you know, the, the false illegal immigration ca uh, campaign. Um, so this is a problem mm -hmm. that has been unfolding for nearly 40 years, grown to this genocidal proportions. Mm -hmm. And so there are, as far as I can tell, there are four possible scenarios here. One is that, uh, you know, you have one million Rohingya people and, uh, uh, you know, uh, third countries uh, that are sympathetic to their plight, uh, uh, you know, both Western and uh, Muslim, um, you know, uh, countries like Saudi Arabia, Pakistan and others, they take significant number of Rohingyas to re resettle in their country. Saudi alone has about like a 400 or 300,000 Rohingyas already. Mm -hmm. uh, Pakistan is home to about 100,000 Rohingyas and in Bangladesh uh, has the largest uh, Rohingya More than population a in, 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 in the world today. And so, so how to, how to, no, no, how to uh, let me, the, the second possibility mm. is that um, Bangladesh, um, you know, keeps them where they are in situations that are extremely miserable and, uh, you know, they, they don't. Inhuman. Inhuman mm. uh, with the support of uh, international community. But that you know, cannot be. No, so that second option, that has been the case since 1992. Yeah. You know, we've got like a uh, uh Now it's expanding up to like, uh, you know, 800,000. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the third scenario is, um, you know, um, pressure the Burmese government 
to take them back. But by all indications, the Burmese are not interested in receiving these Rohingyas back at all. They mm -hmm. have reclaimed the burnt land that belonged to the Rohingya or that where the Rohingyas live. And the full, uh, uh, you know, uh, the scenario mm -hmm. is that the, the Bangladesh leads an effort internationally to create a Kosovo-like uh, UN-administered, uh, uh, you know, dirty, dirty. autonomous region. For them, if the, the Burmese Buddhist majority, Rakhine majority, and the military do not want the Rohingyas to return to their homeland, then I think this is a case where the, the international community They're insisting needs, on, I think. They are insisting that uh, uh, the Rohingya must not return. They are proposing uh, they would take only 100 300 a day that will take about 12 25 years, years or more 12 for 15 years yeah yes. yeah so like there are four scenarios and then so yeah. bangladesh and the world community need to decide what is the best possible scenario both for the rohingya and for the host community in bangladesh dr jani thank you so much for being in this show today thank you dear viewers dr mong jani is a scholar, an activist, and social leader against uh, genocide and atrocities all over the world, especially. He has raised his voice against the fascism going on against Rohingya Muslims in Myanmar, we call Burma. So let us see how quick and how nicely, wisely, we can have a solution to this uh, world problem which is being handled by Bangladesh with the utmost uh, sincerity and social risk. Thank you very much for being with us.